Uh, I just felt actually as we were singing um, that one song, it said something about hearing the whisper of love. And I just felt that there was people here that hadn't heard that or haven't heard it for a long time. And I just want to pray for you first. Father, I just thank you that you are a God who pours your love upon us. But Father, I, I want to pray for those that are just struggling to hear your, your voice of love to them. And Father, I pray that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. I, Father, you would break through the lies of the enemy and that you would speak your words of love, that they would hear your words of love cascading over them today. Amen. Um, I was given the title Advancing the Kingdom Everywhere in Everything, and that's all I was told, so, um, which was great. So this is my take on it. Might not have mean, been what they meant, but it's too bad. <laughs> um, so we have been... I, I don't know about you, but I have just really enjoyed this year of teaching. Um, going from the foundations of being God-centred to um, growing in him and being transformed by him to connecting together and now reaching out. I have just been so blessed and I've been (coughs) challenged to change. And now we're talking about reaching, advancing the kingdom. And this has been, for me, my greatest challenge. This is really squeaky. Um, And... I think that will become, you'll see you later, because I'll probably get a bit upset. (laughs) Because God is really working. Um, If you ever want to be a preacher, can I say God's going to really work in you (laughs) if you want to stand up here? Because, um, I don't know, he's just doing the work in my life. So I really hope that he um, speaks to you too and believe he will do. Um, So we have established over the last couple of weeks that there is a command to go. Um, Matthew 28, 19 says, go and make disciples of all nations. Mark 16, 15 says, go into the world and preach the gospel. So the commission, the instruction to go is there. It's not as it used to be portrayed, particularly when I was younger in the churches, for some people to go off somewhere else. It's a commission, it's an instruction that's established for us now, for us here. God's heart, in Timothy, says that all people, he wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And God, in his infinite wisdom, chooses me and you to bring people to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, It's not just... um, well, I can't think of anything else to do. We are his best plan. You are his number one plan for where you are going. You, you are it. He doesn't think, oh, I, I can't find any other way of doing it. I'll send you. I, I don't know why God doesn't just zap everyone from the sky. I, I don't know why he chooses me and my inability sometimes to do what I should do. I don't know, but he does. And you are his best plan for your world and I am my best plan for my world. And so he is all wise, so his decision to send you is wise. He is good, so his decision to say to you, go, is good. His instruction is is just ordain that we are the way and we've just got to say yep I'll I'll go JP preached a couple of weeks in Ross on this I think he did here too and I sort of sat there as I'm inclined to do and said to God well I I just haven't got any more time to go I'm really sorry (laughs) my life is really busy you know I, I work all the time I work in the evenings I've got the kids and they're all over the place and demanding me and that person at work is really frustrating and that other person is really annoying. And, you know, I haven't got any time in my life to go. And God um, said, my intention is not to overwhelm you, but I knew what your life would be like when I told you to go. It's not a surprise to me that you're suddenly busy. 
it's not a surprise to me that you've got three children. I made them. It, it's not a surprise that you've got that job because I got it for you. Yeah, I know what your life was like when I told you to go and I'm still telling you to go. And so the first thing is that there are no excuses, I'm afraid, as I've come to realise. Our instruction is to go. But I thought, well, you know, I haven't got time and I haven't got time to go on a mission um, wherever. We can't really do it. And so God said, I don't want you to do more stuff. What I want you to do is have this heart of going all the time. Everything in everywhere. Have this heart of actually as I go to the shop, I'm going to preach your good news. As I walk past that homeless person, I'm going to preach the good news. As I go into work, I'm preaching the good news. As I talk to my children, I'm preaching the good news. I'm bringing the presence of Christ as I walk down the road. I'm bringing the presence of Christ as I'm in here. We are bringing the presence of Christ. We are going wherever we are going. And that heart is a heart attitude of going as, as well as a physical act of going. Are we willing to say, God, I just want to go for you today? It's not some being big trip to Africa or... South America, it's a going as I drive up the road to work. And that's his heart, is what he wants us to have. <clears throat> we heard last week about the gospel means good news. And I looked up the term good news in a Bible dictionary. And it says the message concerning Christ, the kingdom of God, and salvation. The good news is so much more than salvation. We've got so much more to bring than salvation. We have relationship with God. We have love cascading over us. We have kindness showed to us day after day. We have forgiveness ongoing all the time. We have acceptance. We have, um, I, I often pray, this is one of my things I really love about God. I love lots of things about him. But I love that he perseveres with me. I just love that he hasn't given up on me, that he keeps going. And, and I do sometimes do the same things over God, and God just perseveres. I have such good news, so much good news that we need to, cheer, to preach and to share. But I, and here's where the challenge for me really came strongly. Uh, I read a quote by Francis of Assisi, and it said, preach the gospel, and when necessary, use words. And I, as I thought about this more, I realised that actually I, we, are the demonstration of the gospel. We are going into a, our word and being the gospel. We are going into our word and living the kingdom of God. And it became a more of a challenge to me that I am the demonstration to the people I know of his kingdom and what that means to have the kingdom of God and Christ at work. And all those things, I am the demonstration of love and kindness. And I need to be ready with my story I need to be ready to preach in words the gospel. But if I limit it to that, I, I'm missing out on some of my going. I'm missing out on a lot of my going. And, and I just need to be willing to be going all the time in, through what I do. We are the evidence. We are the demonstration of the gospel, of the good news to the world we go in. I am the demonstration of the good news to my world, but I can't be the demonstration of the gospel to your world. Only you can do that and remember your God's best plan. It says in 1 Peter 3.15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. And it does say, but do this with gentleness and respect. And in the Passion it says, if anyone asks you about the hope living within you, Always be ready to explain. And I went backwards from that. I thought, well, what is it? Is there anything about me that is going to cause someone to see hope? 
is there something in me that is going to ask, someone going to say, oh, I can see hope in you, can you tell me about it? And I was really challenged about what I, you know, just did they see hope in me? Was hope overflowing in me? And I, I got a bit overwhelmed with this for a while about how obviously the enemy was lying to me about how I was not always being the person I should be. I was not bringing, I wasn't overflowing with hope. And, you know, I, I just, the enemy was just saying, well, you said that at work today, you did that. And I was just, I just cried out to God. And God, you know, just said to, to us, you know, I'm just inviting you to, on a journey with me. I'm just inviting you on a journey of life being transformed and your life being transformed. I'm inviting you on a journey that as you get to know me better, that foundation of relationship with God and trust in him, as I fill you up, so you'll be able to overflow more. I'm inviting you on that journey of continual transformation of glory to glory, so that more and more and more, there will be evidence of hope overflowing. And actually, what I did last week doesn't matter now. It's this journey I'm going on now. I'm going up with God on his journey of transformation, of a life transformed, of a relationship with him, of trusting in him, him filling me with joy and peace and that hope overflowing. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what God's intention for us is. And that is how we will be sharing, some of how we will be sharing God news. How, the, you know, we heard that the Holy Spirit gives us power to be witnesses. And, you know, I'm sure we can tell of times when God has really anointed our words as we talk. But actually, he has the power to transform us so that we can witness and we can be the word of God. Sometimes it's, for me, and maybe for you, it's easier to almost believe that he can do miraculous things or bring power to my speech. But when it's come to changing characteristics of me or things in me that I've been doing for a long time, I think it's perhaps a bit impossible for God because I've been this way for a long time. And, you know, and God, it isn't. God can work. God can change. God can transform us from one degree of glory to another. We are being made perfect. And we've got to have this attitude of, you know, it's not what, what I was, but it's what I'm going to be. And that's what I'm going to do. Our position as children um, and the Father's love, that increasing trust and the Holy Spirit just pouring joy and peace in us, will overflow the hope. <clears throat> in Peter it says, live such good lives among the pagans, see your, so they will see your good deeds and, God, and God's will that your honourable life should silence those ignorant people. And so we are the demonstration of the good news. And that actually means that we have to be different um, you've got the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God and they are not the same and their values are not the same and their actions are not the same and their reactions are not the same. And this is where it gets harder because this means actually this isn't some vague thing we're talking about today. This is going to have to change us tomorrow. We have to live an opposite life. Jesus didn't choose to come and be self, self-promote himself. He didn't choose to put himself up high on a pedestal. He chose to be humble. You know, he chose to get baptised by John the Baptist, didn't he? And yet, he could have just demanded a palace and a, a royalty, but he, he chose humility. That's the kingdom of God, choosing humility. And we have an opposite life to live. Um, 
And through the opposite life, we demonstrate the kingdom of God. You know, we love instead of hate. We forgive instead of seek revenge. We worship instead of worry. We're unoffended instead of taking offence. We're gentle instead of angry. We're at peace instead of anxious. We show mercy instead of judgment. And that is quite a challenge um, for me, and I think for some of you. Our actions and reactions give evidence of Christ and the kingdom of God. And it's a countercultural lifestyle. It's preaching the good news. I bought um, a book last year. Well, I bought a book a couple of years ago, and it, it, I thought it, it, was so, it was so good. It was um, all about the lies of the enemy and being, you know, speaking truth over yourself. So when the author, Alex Seeley, wrote a new book called The Opposite Life last year, I pre-ordered it, so I had it. And I read the first chapter, and I thought, you know, this is too hard. <laughs> And I put it down. I thought, this is too challenging. And so I just put it down. I thought, God, you're asking too much of me. And um, I just came back to it a few weeks ago, and I'm picking it back up and and realising that God is just inviting us on this journey of living the opposite life. That he is not expecting perfection, although he would like it, but he is taking me on a journey of transformation so I can demonstrate the kingdom of God in my life. You know, our loving instead of hating, our gentleness instead of harsh words is demonstrating the kingdom of God. The power of his Holy Spirit can transform us. I can overflow with hope. You can overflow with hope. I can go into my world and be the gospel. You can go into your world and be the gospel. I can demonstrate the good news in my work. You can demonstrate the good news in your work or in your life. I can overflow in hope with my family. You can overflow with hope. I can show peace. I can be kind. I can show joy. I can bless. That potential is there for all of us. But we've got to take hold of it and say, God, I'm willing to go on this journey with you. You know, peace, when there's turmoil in the world, is miraculous. Kindness, when there's so much harshness and judgment, is miraculous. Joy, when there's despair all around, will be miraculous. Blessing, when there's so much hurt and retaliation, is miraculous. We can live a life that others see evidence of the good news and ask us to tell them why, and isn't that what we want? That's why we're getting our story ready. That's why we're getting our knowledge of the gospel ready, so that we can give a reason for our hope. But we want to be people whose lives are such demonstrations of the kingdom of God that they ask us about the hope within us. And that's the journey that God wants to take us on. It's not impossible because we serve a God of the impossible. 2 Corinthians 10, one of Andrew's favourite verses, says, Though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war against, according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to demolish strongholds. And through living and demonstrating the kingdom of God, you're not being weak, which is what the enemy might tell you. You are demolishing his strongholds. We are demonstrating the kingdom of God and we are defeating the enemy. Kindness is not weakness. Kindness is demolishing people's strongholds of the power of the enemy. And that is the potential that God sees in all of us. That is the life God wants for all of us. To be those countercultural, opposite life people that say, I want to go. And I want to live that opposite life because you're good, you're wise, and I'm your best plan. And that's what he's saying to each one of us today. Go into your world tomorrow and be kind because all around there's unkindness and worse. 
Go into your world and be hopeful. Go into your world and bless and don't retaliate. And it's so... I, I preached this last week in Ross, so I've had a week's trial. And it, it's been a real effort. I've had to practice this. It's not just been a, oh, yep. I've had to practice this. But what I've realised is how much I've seen, because I've not been joining in so much, the negativity and the moaning and the despair that there is around. And I didn't notice it so much because I was too much part of it. And it's, it's, it's going to take practice. It's going to build into our lives. It's these patterns that we need to put into us. But God wants to do it. God is so good, isn't he? Isn't he just amazing that he, takes, he saves us from something to do something? And he, in all our... Look at, we're all different, aren't we? We look around, we're all different, and yet all of us are his best plan for where we are. All of us are the ones to go where we are. And that's just incredible. God is so amazing that he wants to work and keep working and keep transforming us so that we can bring more and more hope to the world. And that is what we want to do because he's worthy of that. He deserves to be lifted high. And that's what we want to do. Father, I just thank you that you love us so much. I thank you that you love us so much that you don't want to leave us where we are. And that your desire to change us, your desire to transform us is because you're good. And you know it will bring freedom and you know it will bring hope. And you know it will bring blessing. And so Father, we, we don't want to be those that hold back. We want to be those that say, yeah, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go on this journey with you. I'm going to go on this, this journey of being countercultural, of living as a demonstration of the kingdom of God, not of the kingdom of the world. Lord, we are so amazed at you. Father, I just pray your Holy Spirit would come and just touch us and change us and just cement these truths in our lives. That you would begin, even now, that transformation of our mind that says, I can't, into saying, with you I can. Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to bless you. You're so good. And we want to be those that say, yes, I'm going. I'm going to be changed by you to demonstrate your kingdom. Amen.